Uh, okay, hello, uh, welcome to our session. I hope you all had a great lunch. And uh, today we are going to talk about uh, how we leverage Apache Beam to unify the streaming and the batch pipelines at LinkedIn. Uh, depending on how you look at that uh, picture, someone may say it's unifying things, someone may say it's splitting things. Uh, just for the record, we're trying to unify it. Uh, a little bit more about ourselves. Uh, my name is Shang Jing. I, uh, after I graduated from the Columbia University, I worked at uh, Bloomberg for about four years, where I focused on some financial like streaming uh, processing there. And then about three years ago, I joined the LinkedIn AI infrastructure team. Uh, my interest has always been in the big data technologies, especially how we can uh, apply them to the real world use cases. And uh, you hope? Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Yu Hong. I graduated from Rice University and then joined IBM for internship for summer. And after graduation, I joined LinkedIn and started working on the streaming processing for three years. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, in today's talk, we are going to focus on a concrete pipeline called standardization and its backfilling process. I will first explain uh, what it is and how it's originally hosted at LinkedIn. Uh, after that, I will also go through a few pain points about the backfilling, which is the motivation why we introduced the unified pipeline solution. Uh, Yu Hong will then showcase about the solution as well as the improvements we have done to uh, support it. Uh, in the end, she will also share the performance gains by our work and uh, as well as our, our future plans. Okay, uh, what is standardization? By definition, it's a process to map the user inputs into a set of predefined IDs. Uh, here's my LinkedIn profile. As you can see, I typed the software engineer at uh, LinkedIn as my headline there. And uh, the standardization will extract the LinkedIn out as my current company and map it into ID one, two, three, four. Uh, it can also learn that I'm from the tech industry. Uh, please don't ask me why we put the tech industry as ID1 there. Uh, I think it's just uh, some, because some software engineer did that in the beginning. Uh, why we need standardization? Uh, because we want to eliminate the typos or ambiguity from the raw user inputs. For example, uh, some of my colleagues may not notice the second I in the LinkedIn is supposed to be in uppercase. Uh, so they may type the string differently. However, the standardization should still map all those strings into the ID 1, 2, 3, 4, because we do work in the same company. Uh, regarding the ambiguity, you may be surprised that there are other companies called uh, LinkedIn. Uh, but are focusing on completely different industries. Uh, the standardization should try its best to not standardize, uh, standardize them into the same ID. As a result, the standardized data is considered as high quality data uh, and is widely used in LinkedIn for building the search indexes or training the models like recommendation models. Uh, it is also not as simple as you may think uh, Previously, it could just be some string mapping, but uh, nowadays it has become a job that uh, has multiple complex AI model in it. My team designed its original architecture. Uh, we hosted the standardizers as streaming pipelines because whenever there is a profile update, we want to standardize them as soon as possible so they can show up in the search immediately. Uh, this is also the reason why we call them real-time standardizers. Uh, due to the, perform uh, due to the uh, latency and the throughput requirements, we further break them down into hundreds of parallel running pipelines so that each of them can just uh, focus on a specific area. For example, the company issued in this diagram. Uh, the standardizers are also using Beam Java SDK and are executed by uh, the LinkedIn invented streaming engine Samza as the Beam runner. They are running 24 by seven, uh, listening from the update stream, doing the process, uh, 
and eventually writing the re result to the output DB. It may also look up the additional information from the remote tables. However, uh, real-time standardizers are just not enough. Sometimes due to the model change or just some accident that has caused the data loss, we have to do a special process called the backfilling to recover the data. When this happened, uh, a separate streaming pipeline with exactly the same code but a slightly different config will be deployed. Uh, instead of reading from the uh, profile update stream, it will replay all the profiles and uh, standardize all of them again. As you can see, this is going to be a heavy process given we have 830 million LinkedIn members there. Uh, also, this is the so-called Kappa architecture, uh, where a real-time job and a batch job shares a single uh, tech stack. We have been running this architecture for several years, and uh, recently we think it's really time to revisit, especially due to the backfilling issues that I'm going to cover in the following slides. Uh, first, the heavy load just uh, leads to the long backfilling time. Uh, in order to improve the accuracy of the uh, standardizers, our AI engineers keep introducing more complex models to it. As a result, they slow down those standardizers. We have seen some of them need more than one week to finish one backfilling, and uh, this is not acceptable. Uh, secondly, it's really hard to scale. Ideally, we could still reduce the backfilling time by uh, scaling it up with more containers. And, uh, but, but we found it's very hard to do so because our streaming cluster is optimized for those long-running jobs. Uh, they don't really like our uh, spiky resource request for the temporary backfilling jobs. Uh, unfortunately, we can only run three backfilling at the same time, and uh, this has become the bottleneck to iterate the models more frequently. Uh, thirdly, we do show our impacts to other teams, but unfortunately in a bad way. Uh, whenever we do the backfilling, it's kind of doing the stress testing to our partner teams. Uh, for example, the standardizers could look up the remote tables. Uh, during the backfilling, this will generate tons of traffic and uh, easily eats up all the caches on those servers. This will also affect the un unrelated readers uh, as well. Uh, also, because we are running the pipeline on a co-located, uh, on a, on a multi-tenant uh, cluster, so our backfilling pipelines could negatively affect other co-located pipelines by using up all the I.O., network bandwidth, or even CPU. Uh, finally, it also adds the operational overhead to our engineers. Uh, despite the on-call issues we have seen, uh, just because we are running a temporary uh, streaming pipelines, someone needs to intensively monitor and uh, stop it when it finishes. Overall, we think uh, most of, of the issues are really due to the fact that we are running a typical batch job in a streaming way. And uh, the idea is really simple. Can we run the backfilling as a normal batch job while keep the real time as it is? Essentially, we are switching back to the Lambda architecture. Uh, I will hand over to Yu Hong to talk about more on the solutions. Thanks. Thanks, Shangjing, for sharing the use cases and the backfilling issues we met. Next, we want to talk about the solutions we tried to solve the issues and also some ben uh, performance gains. So as Shangjing already mentioned, we want to run the backfilling job as batch jobs. And at linking, most of our batch jobs are Spark SQL jobs. So the first solution came to our mind is to have a separate code base, which is a Spark, a Spark SQL job only for the backfilling cases. However, this means that our users will have to maintain two different code bases, uh, 
and for engineers, they will need to be familiar with different languages and also different learning curves. If there are some issues happen, engineers will need to reach out to different infra teams to get support. So finally, we decided to drop this solution. Then we come to one question. Is it possible that we can only maintain one code base, but with the ability to run it either as a batch job and a streaming job? So here comes to our next solution. We want to maintain a unified architecture using Beam. So as we can see from side here, now our users only need to maintain one code base, which is written in, uh, written in Beam. And when deploying, it can be deployed either as streaming or batch. If it is the target is streaming, then SAMHSA runner will execute its pipeline as uh, stream, streaming job. Uh, it is the same as how we are dealing with our real-time processing now. If the target is batch, then this pipeline will be executed by Spark runner, which is only for the back serving cases. In order to keep the code exactly the same between streaming and batch, we introduce a concept called unified pipeline. With unified pipeline, we can hide the differences between topologies and runners underneath. So next, let's take a look how the unified pipeline looks. And this is a very simple example of unified pipeline. And the logic here is part of the standardization use case which Shang Jing mentioned at the beginning. The pipeline here just read from profact data and then do join with side input. Uh, finally, uh, applies the user defined cost function cost standardizer and finally write the result to some outputs. Uh, the code here, it is hard to tell whether it is a streaming pipeline or a batch one, but internally it will be executed differently. Let's take a look at each step. As we all know that the biggest differences between streaming and batch is IOs. For streaming pipelines, we can directly read in from some unbounded data source like Kafka. For batch ones, we can read from some bounded distributed data set like HDFS. Similar to the output side, for streaming pipelines, usually we can directly update the DBs, but for batch ones, usually we just produce a data set. Uh, as we can see from the graph here, how we do is we first do some checks and then do different consume or producing logic based on the pipeline type. How do we achieve this in code? We want to introduce a new P transform, which extends the default beam P transform. We call it unified P transform. A unified P transform is a special one. It allows the different implementations according to the pipeline type. Uh, we give an, a brief example here is the read function. According to this example, we can tell that every implementation of unified p-transform need to provide two expand functions. One is expand streaming, the other expand batch. With these two different implementations, we can provide the topology differences. At runtime, we will first track the pipeline type and then call the corresponding expand functions Uh, there's one thing more we want to share is unified table join. So the Beam join API provided by default actually already provides all the functionalities we want uh, by doing code group by key. However, we during implementations, we think that it is not always possible to do join via code group by key, especially when the table support key lookup. So we want to introduce this new P transform called unified table join. With this new P transform, we provide three options to do join based on the table characteristics. If the table support key lookup, then we can directly seek the key from the main input in the table to do the join. Otherwise, we can still using the code group by key to do the join. It's uh, doing the data shuffling. Uh, even more, we can do join 
while uh, by boarding cast in the table if the table size is not very large. Based on the unified pipeline solution we provided, we want to share some of our performing gains. Um, this benchmarking result is based on running the same backfilling pipeline as a streaming one, which is what we did before, and also run it as a batch job using the unified beam pipeline. As we can see here, the total memory allocated before was nearly seven, uh, 6,000 GB hours, and the total CPU time was nearly uh, 4,000 GB hours when running it as streaming. But now, it only, uh, around, it's only around oh, a little bit over 2,000 GB hours for the memory, and it's less than 2,000 hours for the CPU time. Even more, the duration is reduced a lot. When running it as a streaming job, it was over seven hours to finish the processing. But after we migrate it to a batch job using unified pipeline, the cost is less than 30 minutes. Given all the benchmarking results, we think there are four main wins we want to share. The first is productivity. With unified streaming and batch pipeline, we can write the code once and then run it in different environment, no matter it's streaming or batch. Also, it is faster. Uh, it has saved 94% of processing time and also it saved half of the resources. According to our cost to serve analysis, the cost to serve now operating cost is only reduced by 11 times compared with before. Um, finally, we want to share some of our, of our feature works. The first is Python support. So now all of our use cases are written in Java, but in machine learning areas, Engineers are more familiar with Python. So Python support is one of the areas we want to investigate. Also, so far, uh, all of our use cases are backfilling jobs, but we are actually actively working on onboarding other use cases too. Last but not least, uh, we want to investigate more on runners. Samsung Runner now is the only runner we use for the streaming processing and Spark Runner is also the only one we use for the batch processing. So we want to invest more on other runners uh, to expand our unified pipeline. Okay, that's all the things we want to share. Thank you for your time and attention.